In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural desert camo material in Blender. And then after we create the procedural material, I'm going to show you how to join it together into this custom node with these different values. So we're going to add these different color values here that you can use to change the colors of the camo. And we also have a scale value to change the entire scale. We also have the detail amount, and we also have a second detail amount to make it even more detailed. We also have a roughness slider to change the roughness, and even the saturation of the colors. So I'm going to show you how to set this up in the video. If you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this material, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. You can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. Now before we create the procedural material, I thought I'd show you the 3D setup just in case you want to set it up the same way that I have. But you can really add this procedural desert camo material to lots of different objects. You could, for instance, add it onto some fabric, maybe mix it with a fabric material to get a desert camo fabric. You could also add it to like a tank or a military truck, or just add it to really any object. So I like to preview my procedural materials on spheres. So I pressed shift A and I went here and added an icosphere. And then right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I just turned the subdivisions up so that it is nice and smooth. And then using the object context menu, I shaded it smooth. Now the default primitive objects in Blender are a little bit taller than the average human height. So this is a really big sphere. So what I did is scaled the sphere and then I typed in 0.2 and enter. Just so that the sphere is a bit smaller and then you can just press Control A and apply the scale so that's the object's new default size. And then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the sphere. Now to get some nice realistic lighting right over here on the world properties, I added in this Chinese Garden 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can go here to the world, just add a new world, and then on the color here you can click on the yellow dot and you can choose environment texture and then you can click on the open button and just open up the downloaded HDRI and this will give us some nice realistic lighting and reflections. Now also to make the background transparent you can go here to the render properties and you can open up the film tab and you can check mark the transparent button and that way you can't see the HDRI in the background. And then also to make the colors look a bit nicer right here on the color management I use the view transform of filmic and I set the look to very high contrast. So I'm in the shading workspace so I have the 3D viewport right here and I'm in the rendered mode and then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'm just going to click on new to add a new material and I can rename the material. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click here on edit and you can go to the preferences and then over there on the add-ons tab just search for node wrangler and you can check mark the node wrangler add-on. So to start off I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and let's just drop the Voronoi texture here. And then using the feature of the node wrangler you can control shift and select different nodes and that is going to preview the node on the object. And also with the Voronoi texture selected I'm going to press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and I'm going to use the object coordinates so let's put the object into the vector and the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. And then also the mapping node will be used to scale the entire Entire material. So right here on the Voronoi texture, I'm going to turn the scale up. So I'm going to turn it up to like a 20 so you can see more of those dots. But now I want to distort this texture because I want to make it look more random and kind of noisy. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture. And we can put the noise texture in between the mapping and the Voronoi. And so if we put it in between the mapping and the Voronoi, the noise texture is going to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture. So you can now see it looks much more random. And then I actually want to take the factor value. We're going to put the factor into the vector of the Voronoi. And then let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'm going to click on the 3D here and I'm actually going to change it to 4D instead. And then the W value, you can just drag that around and it'll kind of randomize the placement of the noise. I'm just going to turn the W value to 1. Let's also turn the scale up. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like 15 so you can see it better. And then also I will turn the detail up to the 
max of 15 as well. So now you can see it has much more detail. And then I will also turn the roughness up. So I'm gonna turn the roughness up to like a 0.7. So it has even more detail. And then I also wanna give it a little bit of distortion. So I'm just gonna turn the distortion value to 0.1. And then also right here on the Voronoi texture, I wanna take this randomness value and I wanna turn the randomness all the way to zero. Now I'm not actually going to be using the Voronoi texture distance. I'm gonna be using the color instead. So if I control shift and select the Voronoi texture again, it's gonna go down all the values. And so I wanna preview the color value. And that is the texture that I'm going for. Now these are not the colors that I want. So I wanna change the colors to desert camo colors. And I also want these colors to be customizable in the node group. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix node. Let's drop the mix node up here. And then on the float here, I can just change this to color because we're working with color values. And I can put the mix here after the Voronoi and we want the color to be going into the factor. So the factor value is going to control what parts are color A and what parts are color B. So we can now change these colors. So I'm going to click right here on the white tab and I'm going to start by just making this kind of like a tan color. And then here here on B, I'm going to make this kind of like a brown color. Now I actually want to edit this color value because I want to be able to see more and less of these values. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and we're going to put the color ramp in between the Voronoi and the mix. So I can now play around with the color ramp colors, and that is going to affect the factor, and so that'll control where it's going to be color A and where it's going to be color B. So I want to be able to see these colors a little bit better. If I zoom way in here, you can see that there are more colors in there, but you're not able to see them very well. So right here on the color ramp, I'm going to hold down the control key and then click in the middle, and that's going to add another tab. And then I can make this a little bit lighter. You can see if I make it lighter, now we're able to see a bit of those colors a bit better, and they're a bit darker. And if you want to use the same light gray color that I'm using, you can go over here to the hex value, and you can punch in DA, DA, DA. And then to make it even more contrasty, I can kind of drag this around. So I actually want to drag this more towards the black. And if I drag it more towards the black, now there's quite a bit more contrast. So you can see those different chunks of color. And then right back over here on the mix, if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using, color A is going to be a hex value of B1, A4, 6, 8. And then color B, that is going to be a hex value of 5E, 4, 1, 2F. So this is the first texture in our desert camo, but I actually want to create a different texture which has a few different colors, and I want to place the texture a little bit differently, and then I want to overlay it on top of this texture. And that way it'll be a bit more random and there'll be a few more colors. So what I'm going to do is click and drag to box select the noise texture, the Voronoi, the color ramp, and the mix. So I'm going to box select these four nodes. Then I'm going to press Control shift d So Control shift d is going to duplicate the nodes, but it's going to keep the wires plugged up so that it's still using the mapping and texture coordinate. And then I can Control shift and select the mix to preview it. So I now want to change some of the settings. So I want to take this W value here, and I want to change this. And I'm actually just going to turn it to 0. And that way it's going to move the texture around. So by changing the W value, it's basically randomizing where the texture is. And then also if I select this bottom color ramp, I want to reset it. So with the color ramp selected, I'll just hit the backspace and that'll reset it. And then I also want to change the colors of the mix. So on this second mix here, I'm going to change the colors. So the first color that I want to make is kind of like a grayish green. So I'm going to make it kind of like a very desaturated green color and a bit darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for color A is going to be 4-0-3-E-2-9. And then for color B, I want to make this kind of like a tan color. So I'm going to make it a bit brighter and kind of a yellowish tannish color. And the hex value that I'll be using for color B is going to be C4 9 F 7 6. So now I can control shift and select this mix and control shift and select this mix. You can see we have two different textures so I now want to mix them together. So I'm going to select one of the mix nodes and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and let's drop it here. And I can drag this over so I have a bit more space. And then to mix these two colors together I'm going to take the result from the first mix and I'll put that into color A and then here on the second mix I'll put the result into color B. And then I can control shift and select this mix to preview 
preview it. Now the factor value is going to determine how much of A it's using and how much of B it's using. And we could put a texture into the factor, but if we don't put a texture into the factor, you can see it's just going to evenly blend between one or the other. Now I actually want to click on the mix here, and I instead want to change this to darken. This way it's just going to add the dark values. So now as I turn the factor up, it's going to use more and more of the other texture, but it's just adding the dark values. And so now you can see that we can see the texture underneath it. So if I control shift and select this mix, we have this texture. And then this texture here, if I control shift and select the mix, this one is being overlaid over the first one. So I can control shift and select the darken. And so you can see by dragging the factor up, we're basically overlaying this mix over this mix. And we're just adding the darker values. So now we can take the result of this darken and we can put it into the base color and then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now I also want to make the textures just a tiny bit lighter. So I'm going to press shift A, I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value node and I want to put the hue saturation right here after the darken but before the principled shader. And we can also use the hue saturation value later when we're setting up the custom material. So right here on the value I'm just going to turn the value to a 1.5 and that way it's going to be a bit brighter. And then I also want to turn the roughness down so on the principled shader I'll just turn the roughness down to like a 0.3. And also if you wanted this to look like metal you could also turn the metallic value up and now it looks like metal although if you turn the metallic value up you might also want to turn the roughness up. Um, but also if this is like a painted metal like if you want to add this onto like a tank or a military truck or something then because the metal is painted you would probably want to keep the metallic value turned down. Or you could also mix this material with like a fabric texture and and make it look like a camo fabric. So that is it, that is the procedural desert camo. But I'm now gonna show you how to join the nodes together into a custom group with custom values. So I'm gonna click and drag and box select all the nodes except the material output. And then I'm going to press Control G. Control G is going to join them together into a node group, and you can press the Tab key to toggle in and out of the node group. And also, right here, I'm going to select the Desert Camo, press Control C to copy the name, click here on the node group, and press Control V to paste it, so it's called Desert Camo. And I can also drag it out so it's a bit bigger, and also let me bring the material output over. So we can now add all the custom values. So I'm going to select the Desert Camo, and I will tab to go into the group. Now if I press the N key to open up the side panel, you can click here on group and you can see there are outputs and inputs. Now here on the output, I want to double click on this to rename this and I'm just going to rename it to shader. I like that a bit better. And then right here you can see there is a group output, so you can put any values into this group output to add the outputs. And the same thing right back here, so there's also a group input and we can put values into the input, and then if I tab to go out of the group, we'll be able to see the values right here if they're in the input. So let's tab to go back into the group, and I first want to add a scale value, so we can take the mapping scale and we can plug that into the group input. And so this way we can change the scale value and that'll change the scale scale of all the textures. Now right here on the inputs, we have the scale right here, and you can double click on this to rename it if you want to rename it. I'm just going to leave it as scale. But if I tab to go out of this group, you can see we have an X, a Y, and a Z value. But I want all of these to just be one single value. So if I tab to go back into the group, I want to click on the scale value right here on the inputs, and I want to change the type from vector instead to float. So changing it to float is going to use a single value. Now you can see the texture is gone now, and if I tab to go back out of the group, you can see the scale has just been turned to zero, so we just need to turn the scale back to the default of one. So just change it to one, and now you can see the texture. Now I also want to add all the colors, so let's hit the tab key to go back into the group, and we can add all the colors up to the group input. So I can drag wires from A into the custom group, and also B, and then also here on the bottom mix, A, and also B. So I'm just going to drag wires all into the group input and then I also want to click on the scale value here on the inputs and I want to click on the arrow to bring it down so it's at the bottom. And then I can rename all these. So I'm going to double click on this to rename it and I'm going to rename this to color 1, double click on this, color 2, and color 3, and color 4. All right, so I've renamed all the colors. So now if I tab to go back out of the group, you can see we have all these different custom colors and I can drag this around to change the colors. So that is great. Let's hit tab to go back into the group. 
Now I also want to add two different sliders for the amount of detail. So what I can do is take the noise texture detail and let's put that into this extra one here. And then right here on the detail, I can double click on this and I'm just going to rename it to detail one. And then I also want to take the other noise texture and I'm going to put the detail into detail one as well. And because they're both going into the same socket, if I tab to go out of the group, I can drag around the detail and that's going to control both of them at the same time. So I will go back into the group. Now I also want to add a second value of detail. So let's take the roughness from the noise texture and let's put that into the extra socket here. And then the roughness here, put that into the extra socket. And then right here on the roughness, I can just rename this to detail two because it's not actually controlling the roughness of the material. It's controlling the detail amount. So if I tab to go back out of the group, we now have detail two and I can drag this around to give it even more detail because we added the noise texture roughness into detail two. And then I also want to add the roughness value into the custom node. So we can just take a wire from the roughness and I can drag this over, put this in here and it has already renamed it to roughness. And then the last one that I want to add is the color saturation. So we can take the hue saturation value node and we can take a wire from the saturation. Let's drag over and I'm going to put that into this extra socket here. And now that's called saturation. And I'm actually going to just rename this to color saturation. And then I can tab to go out of the group. And there we have it. So the custom node is finished. So we have the scale. We also have two different layers of detail. So detail one and detail two. We also have the roughness to make it more rough or more shiny. And then also the color saturation. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase the material, you can get that on my Gumroad store in my Patreon page. Links are in the description. You can also check out my Blender procedural material packs to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.